एम आई ऑडोबल एम आई ऑडोबल नाउ टूडे ऑनवर्ड्स वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद ह्यूमन जोग्राफी एंड दिस टाइम द वे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस यू ऑल माइट हैव गॉन थ्रू द प्रीवियस टेन ईयर्स क्वेश्चन हरली भाई आई आई एम श्योर दैट एवरी ईच एंड एवरी वन ऑफ यू हैज गॉन थ्रू द प्रीवियस टेन ईयर्स क्वेश्चन दैट इज मस्ट बिकॉज I will discuss the syllabus, and you will see numerous questions have been asked, which are not precisely from the syllabus, especially in perspectives in human geography. Perspective in human geography comprises of perspectives in human geography, population settlement, regional planning, economic geography, and models. These five topics. Now. If you have gone through thoroughly, please uh, open up the syllabus also. O please open up the syllabus of uh, perspectives in human geography that is visible on the board. You see, in this syllabus, they have mentioned specific terms like aerial differentiation. aerial differentiation regional synthesis dichotomy and dualism environmentalism quantitative revolution locational analysis radicalism behavioralism human and welfare approaches language religion secularization cultural regions of the world human development index chota sa syllabus lagta hai nahi but it is as large as geomorphology climatology combined see it is not the precise wordings of the syllabus when you study constitution they say study it in letter and spirit letter and spirit these are the letters and we have to read between the lines in order to read the spirit it is soul of geography if geography is a civilization in any civilization its culture is soul the culture is soul this is the soul of geography it is the soul of geography this topic these are the by products of this in perspectives in human geography thoda sa syllabus de rakha hai questions if you see you have seen the questions i am not able to see you bhairavi if you see the questions you will find certain questions are directly from the syllabus but numerous questions are there acha is saal kaun sa question pucha gaya hai uh, just uh, whatsapp me in this, this year previous year what all questions have been asked from human geography i want you to be very thorough with all the questions that have been asked in human geography especially we are going to start with perspective so focus your attention on perspective what all questions have been asked from perspectives in human geography this syllabus appear to be a very small but in reality this syllabus it has hidden schemes basically it's not explicit when i told you letter and spirit if you go by spirit number of things are there which are not explicitly mentioned over here but you have to study them mera phone ka whatsapp khola now if i discuss the syllabus it's very simple what is aerial differentiation today i will discuss the entire syllabus and in 2 minutes i'll give you the overview of the topic that's what you want by somebody explicitly asked me i have forgotten the name sir kindly discuss the syllabus before beginning so discussing the syllabus means what is the meaning of aerial differentiation what is the meaning of regional synthesis what is in 2 2 minutes i must discuss all these topics so you should have a broad 
understanding that what we are going to discuss this is what you want ki be pura jo syllabus hai isme what is the social well being and quality of life what is the meaning of this i should discuss that so that you have broad overview ki what this topic stands for isn't it i'll do that no issues but i explicitly asked you to go through the previous year's questions because you will find numerous questions which cannot be answered if we precisely discuss these topics for example there is a topic in economic geography that is patterns of world trade such an open ended question such an open ended question mujib bhaiya mujib is on online why is radicalism seen as a major as major a paradigm shift in geography but this is explicitly in syllabus radicalism this question is directly from syllabus why is radicalism seen as a major paradigm shift paradigm what is paradigm approaches themes paradigm means approaches themes explain its causes its approaches and criticism it is direct yaar ye koi question nahi hua main tumse wo question puch raha hu acha previous years ke acha theek hai theek hai the interrelationship between social and spatial structure are complex the end dekho ye question the interrelationship between social and spatial structure are complex explain in the context of सोशो सोशो स्पेशल डायलेक्ट अब ये क्वेश्चन तुम सिलेबस छान मारो पूरी आर डी दीक्षित पढ़ लो पूरी सुधता अधिकारी पढ़ लो लेकिन अकॉर्डिंग टू सिलेबस यू वोट बी एबल टू आंसर इट आई विल कवर एंटायर सुधता अधिकारी एंटायर आर डी दीक्षित एंटायर सोशियो इकोनॉमिक जोग्राफी हरौली कहीं कोई चीज तुम्हें नहीं पढ़नी है ये क्वेश्चन तुम यू कैन आंसर ओनली वेन यू हैव द अंडरलाइंग यू हैव द अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ ह्यूमन जोग्राफी उसकी पकड़ हो तुम्हारे पास इंटरलेशनशिप बिटवीन सोशल एंड स्पेशल स्ट्रक्चर व्हाट इज सोशल एंड व्हाट इज स्पेशल स्ट्रक्चर दीज इंटरेक्शन आर कॉम्प्लेक्स एक्सप्लेन द कॉन्टेक्स ऑफ सोशो स्पेशल डायलेक्ट हाउ द कल्चरल एनवायरमेंट इंफ्लुएंसिस द this uh, this is a social uh, this social structure spatial structure spatial structure means on the earth surface various phenomena are distributed on the earth surface physical phenomena and human phenomena that is physical landscape and cultural landscape that is the distribution of phenomena on the earth surface is known as spatial structure spatial structure has a particular pattern known as spatial pattern how this distribution of phenomena spatial so, so, spatial structure and social means so cultural cultural aspect human aspect are correlated they are correlated so this question you cannot answer merely by studying the topics of the syllabus right yes more questions if you have gone through the previous years questions you will find number of questions which are of such nature which are not explicitly to be found in syllabus wo syllabus mein nahi milenge jaise yahi question last year aaya social and spatial uh, interaction between social and spatial aspect matlab how to correlate this iske liye you need to know the background you need to know the background how they are correlated spatial structure first i will define the basic terms i want to understand the basic terminology of human geography what is spatial analysis what is spatial pattern what are spatial processes what is spatial system what is ecological system understand what is normative theory what is basically uh, inductive and deductive approaches what is positivism what is critical geography what was quantitative revolution in detail once you understand the concepts once you understand the themes 
then it becomes what are the various approaches to study geography on one extreme is deterministic determinism milder form of is determinism is neo determinism known as pragmatic possibilism or stop and go determinism still on one still milder form is pragmat uh, this probabilism given by ohk spate and on one extreme is possibilism and the extreme form of possibilism is cultural determinism sequent occupants from cause and effect to sequent occupants cause and effect is a deterministic approach sequent occupants it it means how man brings about changes in nature so tumko kya karna hai first we will discuss the my objective is to make you feel human geography what human geography is samajh mein nahi aata hai words padhne ke baad kya keh raha hai ye interrelationship between social and spatial structure are complex pehle what is social structure and what is spatial structure you must know it what is spatial structure what is spatial analysis what are the various spatial uh, 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 patterns what are the various spatial processes you must understand the basic to answer this question so here i am going to discuss with you the syllabus and the meaning of this and i insisted you to go through the 10 years question now since we are going to start with physical geography then we'll proceed on to other topics so thorough you should be thorough with the questions that have been asked from this section and once we have done it raise all the questions right now aerial differentiation what is aerial differentiation basically hart shown in his book nature of geography in 1939 coined this word aerial differentiation as a concept it was in existence since past since very early period as chorology or chorography it was in existence but as in book he coined the word aerial differentiation aerial differentiation means that objective of geography is to study the various regions of the earth every region is unique and the objective of the geographer is to find out the uniqueness of every 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 region how one region is different from others this approach adopts ideographic approach are you getting it what is aerial differentiation this concept means various parts of the earth are having variations physical variations cultural variations and the task of geographer is to study the various regions in entirety both the cultural landscape and physical landscape and the interrelationship between them and to find out how one region is different from other this is an approach of regional geography human geography is studied in two ways i'll discuss regional geography and systematic human geography regional geography that i discussed in youtube my 13 lectures are there that is regional geography world regional geography where you study countries in particular and you see what are the unique features and how one region is different from other the aerial differentiation in this book he gave the definition of geography that is the most accepted definition till date geography is the study of orderly accurate and rational description and interpretation of variable characteristics of the earth surface abhi samajh mein kuch nahi aayega in fact ho sakta hai agle 4 5 din tak kuch samajh mein na aaye tumhe lage aisa tum aisa mehsoos ho kyunki jab tum urdu padhna shuru karte ho you are studying something very different from physical geography और आई एम टेकिंग यू डीप इन साइड द ओशन पहले कभी नहीं ले गया किसी को आई यू बिकॉज आई न्यू फ्यू क्वेश्चन आर बाउंड टू बी देयर छोड़ दो उसको एक हाथ को नहीं बट दिस टाइम आई विल एंश्योर दैट आई कवर एवरी आस्पेक्ट चार पांच दिन तक हो सकता है तुम्हें ऐसा महसूस होगा अंदर अंदर से बट ग्रेजुअली एज वील प्रोसीड यू विल स्टार्ट गेटिंग एवरी थिंग थिंग्स विल सेटल डाउन थिंग्स विल सेटल डाउन सो हियर इन एरियल डिफ्रेंसिएशन इट इज सिंपली regional geography how one region is different from the other your focus is on differences existing over the earth surface earth geography is what study of variable phenomena over the earth surface hai na and aerial differentiation we study how one region is different from other toffer raised a debate against this because in this app they approach ideographic approach that is they try to find out the differences existing over the various different regions right what is aerial differentiation the di different 
the earth surface has variations and the task of geographers to study those differences existing over the earth surface here they focus on the study of individual regions that is the study the entire region in entirety both cultural and physical landscape and they try to find out the uniqueness of that region and how that region is different from others the basic approach adopted in this is ideographic approach that focuses on studying the differences regional synthesis geography is a multidisciplinary discipline where subject matter has been borrowed from various sciences subject matter has been borrowed from various sciences if you see fenman fenman has drawn a diagram of geography where he has drawn this sociology metrology geology the biology sociology metrology geology biology so geography if you study systematic geography if you study systematic geography beta kholo yaar bachcho ki shakal dikhana do if you study systematic geography from sociology social geography from metrology climatology from geology geomorphology from biology biogeography from basically uh you this uh, other aspect like uh history historical geography so geography has taken is a as a systematic subject it it shares its concerns with various subjects if these subjects are studied in isolation then it is of no use because it is the nature of soil and nature of climate both determines the nature of vegetation so here they study the elements in isolation but geography synthesize or integrates all these elements it is an integrative study that give life that give meaning to any study but one meaning of regional synthesis is this second when you study any region any specific region you study the region in wholeness in entirety both physical component as well as cultural component and the interrelationship between them that is you synthesize all the elements present in any region regional synthesis is the crux of geography it is reason the attire it is the teleology of geography teleology means why geography has come into existence and the basic objective of geography is synthesis geography synthesize all these things all these special special branches are a part of systematic geography and when you study a region you study the physical component of that region in regional geography also human component and the interaction between them that is synthesis so regional synthesis or zyada discuss mein hum log padhenge isko topic ko it is in syllabus we'll discuss that topic in detail regional synthesis ka matlab samjh mein aaya kuch halka phulka ek halka idea lag gaya hoga ab main pura syllabus to yahan padha nahi dunga ek bar mein आज मुझे पूरा सिलेबस डिस्कस करना है दो दो मिनट में बेसिक बेसिक चीजें बता रहा हूं हर एक की नाउ डायकोटोमी एंड डोलिज्म अब नेचर ऑफ ज्योग्राफी इज सच एंड द एप्रोचेस टू स्टडी ज्योग्राफी आर सच दैट क्रिएट्स डायकोटोमी एंड डोलिज्म डायकोटोमी मींस डिवीजन इनटू टू कॉन्ट्रास्टिंग ऑपोजिंग ग्रुप्स विच आर नॉट रेडी टू एक्सेप्ट इच अदर डोलिज्म मीन्स Atma or Paramatma exist one thing existing in two forms. So in geography, the dichotomy between physical geography, human geography. Physical geographers say the objective of geography is to study the physical features. Human geographers say no, the objective of geography is to study the cultural landscape. So there is a dichotomy divided into two watertight compartment groups. But ultimately, what we see when we study physical features we call it physical geography and we study when the cultural landscape is studied we call it human geography so physical geography and human geography there is no dichotomy as such but there are two extremes of the same continuum in physical geography laws of general science can be applied with precision climatology mein dekho correlative force but in systematic human geography those laws cannot be applied with precision with deterministic fashion with cause and effect 
हाँ प्रोबेबलिज्म इज देयर अ थ्योरी इज देयर प्रोबेबलिस्टिक थ्योरी इन इफ अ ग्रुप ऑफ पीपल इज टेकन यू कैन एज्यूम दैट इन सर्टेन सर्कमस्टांसिस दे आर गोइंग टू टेक सर्टेन डिसीजन बट फॉर इंडिविजुअल्स इट्स नॉट पॉसिबल ये कहते हैं बिल्कुल वैसे ही है जैसे द मूवमेंट ऑफ एटम और इलेक्ट्रॉन इज रैंडम बट द होल बॉडी मूव इन कोहिजन सो आइडेंटिफाइंग द बिहेवियर ऑफ ईच एंड एवरी इंडिविजुअल इज नॉट पॉसिबल आई डिस्कस इट लेटर ऑन बट एज अ ग्रुप वी हैव वी कैन पुट फॉरवर्ड अ प्रोबेबलिस्टिक थ्योरी दैट प्रोबेबिलिटी इज देयर दैट पीपल आर गोइंग टू टेक दिस डिसीजन वोटिंग बिहेवियर अभी यूपी में इलेक्शन चल रहा है ना क्या चल रहा है This branch of geography is being studied. Probability nikalte hain. A sampling, a sample is taken, and they did find out the probability. It is all geography. Dichotomy or dualism is that geography is regional geography hai, or systematic geography. Hey, when you study the regions, it is there is no dichotomy as such. Dichotomy has been created because of historical evolution of geography. In the beginning, geography was being taught by those scholars which were which who were taught by geologists that is physical geographers so they used to study physical geography gradually as the emphasis on human aspect as human society develops technology developed man started making changes in the environment and create started creating cultural landscape then this basically this human humanistic approach developed are you getting it so systematic geography regional geography and systematic geography in regional geography we discuss the region in entirety since human beings are involved so the laws cannot be applied but in systematic geography we study the individual phenomena over the entire surface like agriculture geography of the world industrial geography of the world resource endowment of the world resource geography we study the distribution of individual phenomena over the world how it varies and in human geography we study those we study every phenomena agriculture industry resource human physical of that particular region so as such they both are complementary to each other there is no dichotomy there is dualism geography exists both as regional geography as well as systematic geography ab ye topic chote mein explain karna bahut mushkil hai because we have to give specific examples dichotomy and dualism there is no dichotomy as such dualism is there have you got this नहीं भी गॉड दिस तो गॉड दिस हो जाएगा व्हेन वील स्टार्ट इट एनवायरमेंटलिज्म मैन एनवायरमेंट रिलेशनशिप ह्यूमन जोग्राफी इज ऑल अबाउट मैन एनवायरमेंट रिलेशनशिप एंड इन द बिगिनिंग मैन वाज अडेप्टिंग इट सेल्फ टू एनवायरमेंट बरसात से बचने के लिए यूज टू मेक केव्स लिव केव्स नाउ दिस अडेप्टेशन ग्रेजुअली ट्रांसलेटेड इन इंफ्लुएंस एंड इम्पैक्ट ऑन एनवायरमेंट suppose from rain or cold when he wanted to protect himself he used to make use of natural resources he used to live in caves while living in caves he used to dig the rocks gradually as the technology increased this adaptation because of technological development man started influencing environment in a big way and one when the influence of environment ends and the influence of man on environment begins it is very difficult to find out tab when this transition took place uh, some people say it was the neolithic revolution 8000 bc when the man learned the art of domestication of plants and animals then man ex started exploiting the environment it can be said but precise date is very difficult when basically this environmentalism this refers to man environment relationship and it can be approached in various ways initial approach was deterministic that nature determines the human course of action man was taken as a passive agent responding only to the stimuli of environment here nature was dominant determine nature was determining the human course of action cause and effect relationship in particular environment human beings will have particular mental capability physical capability the economic and cultural achievements will be determined by the quality of environment but later on gradually various schools developed there was a milder form of environmentalism or determinism that is neo determinism griffith taylor which said basically ha huh, man has certain options it is the nature that determines the best course of action but man acts as a traffic controller who can alter the rate of the development 
but not the progress he gave some flexibility to man that yes man has the ability to slow down the growth nature has determined the best economic program that is neo determinism it is up to man to choose it or not then came probabilism ohk spate he said nature offers multiple options but man cannot choose any one among them he can choose only any one he can he cannot choose any or uh, any option rather he can choose only one option that depends on his level of technological advancement bhai oil was there in central asia during chengiz khan but oil was not a resource because they never have the technology to use it and at that time it, that area was overpopulated because grasses were the only resource and the hordes of these chengiz khan they used to migrate and invade other countries now it is underpopulated because of technology new resources have been tapped this probabilism says yes man has the ability to choose any one option offered by the environment depending on his technological development till milder form possibilism it says nature offers multiple options and it is up to man to choose any among them and now it has there is a cultural determinism which says it is the human culture that determines the nature of human course of action nature or nature is subservient to human culture that is one extreme form we'll discuss all these forms environmentalism now quantitative revolution it is a major breakthrough in geography in fact in all social sciences where Uh, the first first social science congress was held in 1949 where it was decided that geography and other disciplines must adopt necessary approaches to solve human problems otherwise the academic status would be taken away so this introduced new techniques and methods of studying human ge geography that could that were helpful in making laws and theories in human geography because without theories predictions cannot be made and without prediction planning cannot be done quantitative revolution is a theoretical revolution it brought about significant changes in the approaches to study geography various tools and techniques statistical tools and techniques were given sampling method basically new ways of drawing maps basically number of new techniques gis gps so these quantitative revolution refers to a revolution in terms of approaches to study geography various statistical techniques and tools were deployed so the huge data could be assimilated and it could be studied locational analysis this is a product of quantitative evolution in locational analysis this tries to find out what is the factor behind the location of particular economic activity like industrial location theory like central place theory of uh, kristoller nahi right? location it wants to account things are not haphazard in this world it tries to find out an order and sequence why a particular economic activity is located in particular area it makes use of quantitative techniques and we'll discuss it in detail radicalism this approach grew in america against the prevailing state of affairs jaise apna arvind kejriwal hai na radicalist when he came he fired the imagination of people he is working for good he is radicalist who was dissatisfied, dissatisfied with the existing state of affairs and they want the entire change in the system change in complete holistic change in the system they have marxist line lineage marxist uh, inclination not lineage marxist inclination they are against capitalism they are towards feminism they are towards they are towards human welfare but the problem with them is they do not know how to implement their ideas sab kuch change ho jaye but how they don't have matlab radical change in the society vietnam war ke baad this approach grew in during vietnam war um, in america aur ye inhone magazine bhi launch ki thi anti pod that was that that depicted uh, richard peet is the father of this branch he wrote a book radical geography Uh, where he propounded the principles of radicalism ye wo log hain who are extremists who want changes in the entire system but they do not know how to implement the ideas behavioral geography this geography deals with that this says there are two types of environment or realities one is the reality that is the real world second what 
people perceive from their mind see nobody knows what is reality behavioral geographer behavioralism believes there are two types of environment objective environment and environment of mind every individual perceives a same event differently and how he is going to perceive that event is determined in which culture he has been groomed up in the same geographical setting same event will have different meaning for people from different cultural backgrounds they will perceive the same event differently are you getting it so what is reality is difficult because the perception of reality in your in your mind is dif different it depends upon your cultural environment in which you have been groomed up some people are very much superstitious some people are very open it depends upon the culture are you getting it so this in behavioral geography the actual decision of behavior of the man is dependent on the image that he makes up in mind of the real environment not on real environment in fact each and every one of us during our regular interaction with the environment we have formed a image of everything and accordingly we react we never react on the basis of reality my pros mein koi ladka baitha hai on the basis of your image you have framed a negative image about him bhale wo badhiya ho and that particular day he has brought a tiffin to share with you and slightly his elbow coincides with you and you start fighting with him this elbow is not the issue you have grudges you have grudges over the period of time matlab you on the basis of regular and you have an image of everyone your father your mother your friend you have framed the image you don't exactly react on their real behavior you react on the basis of the image that you have formed in your mind ye ek reality hai psychosomatic analysis we'll discuss kai type type ke bahut bada topic hai ye behavioralism numerous types of environment are there human geography this geography led to division of geography from physical and human geography in human geography they say they are this approach grew as a negative reaction against quantitative evolution quantitative evolution and its tools and techniques ignore human values human ethos human aspects and human geography said man is central to geography without man earth has no meaning earth is to be studied merely because it is the home of man they focus on man anthropocentric view they have anthropocentric view it is the man that is the most important element human creativity human awareness human agency these are the pillars of human geography human consciousness matlab they say man is central and all other things are peripheral man should be given the central place in the study of geography rather than environment and this environment is meant for man without man this environment holds no meaning are you getting it but this approach also doesn't have a systematic theoretical base welfare approaches most important in recent times welfare approaches are focused on human well being human issues disparities existing over the earth surface matlab how to bring about holistic change in the quality of human life in fact human development index is one of the major developed by human welfare geographers human welfare approach basically human welfare approach is concerned solely with the welfare of human beings and what all disparities are prevailing why they are prevailing who gets what where and how is the theme of this subject who is the population under study gets what what are the benefits and uh, negative aspects they are facing where what is the place of their residence how it is the place of residence that determines that their why their condition exists we'll discuss it we'll discuss it in detail language religion and secularization jo maine printed notes diye hain that is sufficient language is a medium of transferring your ideas and stories language is a medium of communication language ko detail mein padhenge how the written language written language diffuses uh, lead to diffusion of culture language reveals your culture a written language can spread uh, ideas across time and space what is religion bahut bada question hai ye tum kya hai what is religion but 
religion religion impacts society in a big way eating habits your dietary habits your dressing sense your social code of conduct in fact in india and civil laws are derived from religious precepts hindu civil law and muslim civil law isn't it we'll discuss ye jo main notes diye hain that is more than sufficient and i'll discuss them elaborately secularization is the process of separation of society from the ambit of religion pehle kya tha tum kya khaoge kya piyoge kaise rahoge everything like islamic banking economic theory political laws legal laws all were derived from religious precepts society did not had its individual existence society means a political theory based on uh, uh, legal aspects legal theory, legal system your basically social code of conduct your economic behavior every thing should be determined on the basis of rational aspects previously religion was overpowering every aspect of human life was in fact culture was a part of religion usually religion is a part of culture but in developing world or in previous era culture was a part of religion religion used to dictate the uh, determine the social code of conduct how you are going to behave in society was determined by religion we'll discuss in detail secularization means separation of religion as dark age ended kya tha europe mein ek dark age aayi thi when pope was the head and everything what used to say and scientific questions were not allowed to be raised aur rajaon ki to halat patli ho gayi thi pope was the head religion as this dark age ended and these this kings gained power सबसे पहला काम उन्होंने किया दे स्टार्टेड टू सेल आउट द प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ चर्च दिस प्रोसेस ऑफ सेलिंग आउट द प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ चर्च इज सेक्युलराइजेशन नाउ मींस इसका मतलब अभी क्या हो गया है सेक्युलराइजेशन इज अ प्रोसेस वेयर बाय सोसाइटी कम्स आउट ऑफ द एम्बिट ऑफ रिलीजन एंड एंड द सोशल कोड ऑफ कंडक्ट आर डिटरमाइंड ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ रैशनलिज्म इंस्टेड ऑफ बींग बेस्ड ऑन रिलीजियस प्रिसिप्ट विल डिस्कस इट कल्चरल रीजन्स ऑफ द वर्ल्ड कल्चर और कल्चर कल्चरल रीजन्स वे द पीपल हैविंग सिमिलैरिटी ऑफ ट्रेडिशंस रिलीजन लैंग्वेज सोशल आउटलुक सोशल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन दीज सिमिलैरिटीज आर फाउंड दोज आर सेट टू बी हैविंग कल्चरल ग्रुप पीपल हैविंग सिमिलैरिटी इन कल्चर इज वॉट कल्चर इज अ लाइफ वेस्ट लाइफ स्टाइल कल्चर इज एंटायर लाइफ स्टाइल वॉट यू ईट हाउ यू ड्रेस हाउ टू हाउ यू वर्क योर सोशल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन your cultural tradition your religion your language everything is part of culture and the group, people that exhibit similarity in these aspects are said to be constituting a cultural group and the area over which they exist is known as cultural regions so we'll discuss over here various cultural regions of the world and how they have evolved over the period of time human development index as you might be knowing it previously the prosperity of any region was Uh, measured in terms of monetary aspect gdp gnp then there was a forceful campaign that it does not encompass various aspects so human development index was developed that encapsulates various aspects of human well being like literacy life expectancy quality of life standard of living isn't it we'll discuss it in detail how mahbub ul haq and amar sen framed this and what else rest to be framed no single index can act and encapsulate the all the features of human well being possibly nahi hai and even if you encapsulate those datas will not be found everywhere ye jo topic hai perspectives in human geography isko start karne mein bahut time lagega matlab inke topics topics kya these topics are segregated segregated in the, how, what is the interlinking between them what is the links interlinking them you must know this ye question aaya tha ye bhi social and special aspects so you must know the technicalities of the things fir yahan to basically here simple hai world economic development here we'll study developed countries developing world developed world transition world developing world under developed world what are the various measures to measure this development and what are the various techniques and what are the various problems in measuring the world economic development world resources and their distribution 
go through the world regional geography that i have discussed go through world regional geography agar tum world regional geography pad lete ho na to puri human geography this is systematic human geography where individual phenomena is studied over the earth surface like world agricultural regions hai na world industries i have discussed in regional geography you study in a particular region you i will discuss the resources of that region industry of that region economic aspect of the region physiography of that region i have discussed the same single phenomena like agriculture industry resource when it is discussed all across the world and how it varies that is systematic human geography regional geography when you study all the phenomena in a particular region it is regional geography i have already discussed over there वर्ल्ड रिसोर्सेज एंड देयर डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन तुम चाहोगे तुम यहाँ अलग से पढ़ा दूंगा मुझे क्या है मेरे दिमाग में सब भरा हुआ है बेसिकली कहाँ कहाँ कौन से रिसोर्स हैं किस कंट्रीज में बट इट विल बी वेरी डिफिकल्ट फॉर यू टू रिमेंबर सपोल कोल रिसोर्स में शुरू करता हूँ यूरोप से आई विल सो यस इन स्पेन स्पेन का मैप बनाऊंगा दे इज अ प्लेस ओविडो हैविंग ह्यूज कोल रिसोर्स फिर फ्रांस में आ जाऊंगा कार दिस फील्ड इज शेयर विद फ्रांस एंड जर्मनी कोल फील्ड सार कोल फील्ड एंड देन फ्रेंको बेल्जियन कोल फील्ड फ्रेंको बेल्जियम और सैमरे म्यूज कोल फील्ड शेयर विद फ्रांस एंड बेल्जियम देन इन जर्मनी कोल फील्ड लाइक रूर कोल फील्ड लार्जेस्ट कोल फील्ड सेक्सोनी कोल फील्ड या एलबी रिवर एंड देन सार कोल फील्ड शेयर विद फ्रांस तुम नहीं याद कर रख पाओगे सिलीसियन कोल फील्ड इन जैसे पोलैंड पिल्सन कोल फील्ड इन चिकोस्लोवाइया ऐसे में कंट्री वाइज बताऊंगा तो नहीं याद रख पाओगे आई विल ड्रॉ द मैप ऑल्सो स्टिल नॉट यू गो थ्रू वर्ल्ड रीजनल जोग्राफी वो जो मैप दिए मैंने वेर आई हैव डिस्कस रिसोर्स इंडस्ट्रीज जियोग्राफी रेनफॉल क्लाइमेट सॉइल एवरी थिंग आई हैव डिस्कस टूगेदर रीजनल जोग्राफी आई एल डिस्कस वर्ल्ड रिसोर्स रिसोर्स कोल ऑयल आयरन मेटेलिक रिसोर्स नॉन मेटेलिक रिसोर्स वॉट ऑल रिसोर्स आर देयर नेचुरल रिसोर्स फॉर विच मैन हैज टेक्नोलॉजी टू यूटिलाइज दैम World resources and their distribution. Energy crisis. Energy crisis is a very important topic, and this and this seem to be light of this global climate change and the shifts that are being made towards renewable energy resources. Energy crisis, the gap between the demand and supply of energy. See, this gap is widening more because of rapid growth in developing countries and the increasing aspirations of the people. The living standard is increasing. per capita consumption of energy is increasing it's not solely the because of lack of resource it is increasing disposable income increasing aspirations increasing consumption increasing standard of living that is leading to increased use of energy and this pace of use of energy is increasing as the bulk of the developing countries are developing rapidly growth of india and china the population is huge so this growth has increased the demand for energy Limits to growth. Yes, here comes the new Malthusian. A scholar at Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Uh, these professors invited people, Dennis Meadows and all, and they published a paper, Limits to Growth. उसमें उन्होंने ये कहा, the pace with which human man is exploiting the nature and the resources, and the rate at which population is growing and the consumption is increasing. This world is not going to last for long. उन्होंने फाइव स्टेजेस दी एंड अल्टीमेटली दे सेड अर्थ इज अ आइसोलेटेड स्पेसशिप मैन कैन डेवलप वट एवर टेक्नोलॉजी ही कैन बट अल्टीमेटली दिस अर्थ इज बाउंड टू फिनिश बिकॉज मैन विल एग्जॉस्ट ऑल इट्स रिसोर्स नेगेटिव मतलब जीने की कोई तरीका ही नहीं है इनके हिसाब से अंत होना ही होना है अब लोग घबरा गए The positive aspect of these global environment movements, you are seeing, right? They began after the publishing of this report. Of people, you are saying, "Now the end is here." Means you don't think. Thinking is the highest human activity. You don't think until you are pushed to the wall. When you think that now there is no way to escape, then you start to think, "What can be done?" Although it is negative, it is credited with introducing the world or initiating the process of thinking on the lines of. नेचुरल नेचर नेचर्स कंजर्वेशन और जितनी भी थॉट प्रोसेस हुई है इसी का प्रोडक्ट है तो ऑल दो इट इज नेगेटिव क्यों नेगेटिव हम लोग डिटेल में पढ़ेंगे उसको 
वर्ल्ड एग्रीकल्चर टेपोलॉजी वर्ल्ड एग्रीकल्चर टेपोलॉजी ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर रीजन वर्ल्ड एग्रीकल्चर अब दुनिया में कितने प्रकार की एग्रीकल्चर होती है वॉट आर ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर परस्यूड वॉट आर आर दीरियस एग्रीकल्चर रीजन विटलेसी विटलेसी रट लो नाम एक ही क्वेश्चन यूपीएससी में आया विटलेसी विटलेसी वर्ल्ड एग्रीकल्चर क्लासिफिकेशन रिपीटेड एंड रिपीटेड एंड रिपीटेड टाइम एंड अगेन वर्ल्ड एग्रीकल्चर टाइप वॉट आर द वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर नोमैडिक हर्डिंग और बेसिकली प्लांटेशन हॉर्टिकल्चर एनिमल हजबेंड्री मिक्सड फार्मिंग आर यू गेटिंग इट वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर परस्यूड इन डिफरेंट पार्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड विटलेसी इफ यू कम अक्रॉस दिस क्वेश्चन लिमिट्स टू ग्रोथ ये क्वेश्चन इतनी बार आए हैं डायरेक्ट एंड दे आर ऑलवेज डायरेक्ट बिकॉज दे आर सो इंपॉर्टेंट वर्ल्ड टाइपोलॉजी ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर रीजन वर्ल्ड एग्रीकल्चर वॉट ऑल टाइप्स ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर आर परस्यूड अक्रॉस द वर्ल्ड हियर बेसिकली वेरियस टाइप्स दे स्टार्ट फ्रॉम नॉमेटिक हर्डिंग देन बेसिकली ऑर्गेनाइज ऑर्गेनाइज एग्रीकल्चर कॉमर्शियल फार्मिंग इंटेंसिव एग्रीकल्चर प्लांटेशन एग्रीकल्चर वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर लाइक एनिमल हजबेंड्री मिक्सड फार्मिंग तो दी विल स्टडी वॉट ऑल दीज एक्टिविटीज आर परस्यूड इन विच ऑल पार्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड है ना नाउ एग्रीकल्चर इनपुट्स एंड एग्रीकल्चर प्रोडक्टिविटी इनपुट्स आर वेरियस इनपुट्स लाइक बेसिकली फर्टिलाइजर वॉटर पेस्टिसाइड्स क्वालिटी ऑफ सीड जिंद इलेक्ट्रिसिटी मतलब वेरियस इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एंड इंस्टीट्यूशनल फैक्टर्स इनपुट्स एंड एग्रीकल्चर प्रोडक्टिविटी एग्रीकल्चर प्रोडक्टिविटी बेसिकली रेफर्स टू प्रोडक्टिविटी पर यूनिट एरिया प्रोडक्टिविटी पर लेबर प्रोडक्टिविटी पर यूनिट ऑफ कैपिटल एम्प्लॉयड प्रोडक्टिविटी इज द रिजल्ट ऑफ एफिशियंट यूज ऑफ फैक्टर्स ऑफ प्रोडक्शन बाय इंक्रीजिंग एग्रीकल्चर इंटेंसिटी एग्रीकल्चर प्रोडक्टिविटी प्रोडक्टिविटी कैन बी इंक्रीज बाय इंक्रीजिंग एग्रीकल्चर एफिशियंसी एग्रीकल्चर प्रोडक्टिविटी कैन बी इंक्रीज तो हियर विल डिस्कस वेरियस वेज एंड वॉट आर द प्रोडक्टिविटी लेवल्स इन द वर्ल्ड and where the productivity is more and what are the factors that productivity in india is low in paper we will discuss india mein why agriculture could not emerge as a lucrative profession why people do not go for farming after being graduate and post graduate i will become a farmer nobody says like that why because agriculture has certain inherent drawbacks in india food and nutrition problems detail mein padhenge bhai in different parts of the world sufficient intake of calories is not there even if sufficient intake of calories is there balanced diet is not there and that is resulting in stunted growth dekha chote chote log reh jate hain stunted growth premature failure of organs food and nutrition problem across the world what are the regions where these problem are being faced what all measures have been taken to address them food security just like energy crisis food security is very important kal bhi question aaya tha food security it is not availability of food but it is once access to food that is more important exactly ek question tha yahi main focus deta hu pichle video utha ke dekh lo it is not the availability of food it's once access to food food availability may be a political issue bjp government hai up mein incentives degi logon ko jahan jahan congress ki government hai wahan state government ko support nahi degi kya kar loge tum इट इज एन एग्जाम्पल इट इज एन एग्जाम्पल सेंटर में कोई गवर्नमेंट पोलिटिकल इश्यू होता है पोलिटिकल ये कई सारे फैक्टर्स हैं टेक्नोलॉजिकल फैक्टर्स हैं इंस्टीट्यूशनल फैक्टर्स हैं फूड सिक्योरिटी इट इज अ मैन मेड इशू नाउ इट हैज बीन फाउंड वर्ल्ड ओवर सिंस नाइनटीन सिक्सटी स्टिल डेट द रेट ऑफ ग्रोथ ऑफ फूड प्रोडक्शन हैज ऑलवेज एक्सीडेड द रेट ऑफ ग्रोथ ऑफ पॉपुलेशन ग्रोथ फूड प्रोडक्शन हैज इन एक्सीडेड द रेट ऑफ ग्रोथ ऑफ पॉपुलेशन बट देर आर सर्टन फूड सरप्लस एंड फूड डेफिशियंट रीजन and food is always a political issue it should never be a political issue food should be a basic human right here i will discuss hamari government ne jo shuru kiya hai na ye ye program wo kya kehte hain isko jo ha garib ka lane ye food milta hai ye abhi abhi shuru kiya food security bill wo wto was strongly against this bill there is an approach that i'll discuss that says food is not a commodity फूड इज अ बेसिक ह्यूमन राइट अगर आदमी भूखा आदमी चोरी करता है इट इज नॉट अ 
he theft it is right he can take it worldwide ye maan jane laga hai food is a basic human right and that should be made available to everyone irrespective of his capacity to assess it or not it should be made available to every person famine causes effects and remedies will discuss nowadays famines are you see before independence floods and droughts were more common in india before independence floods and droughts were less common sorry they were less common but famines were more common after independence because of deforestation floods and droughts have become more common but famines have become less common why because of active government intervention bengal famines may during world war 2 all the food was transferred to the army and the crores of people died over there in bengal who say that was a man made famine so here we'll discuss famines are both natural as well as man made and how are over the period of time with the as the countries have gained independence although hazards may have increased but famines have declined and in those parts where famines are still prevalent are bhai in africa numerous part autocracy is there matlab there is a dictator who is least concerned about the human welfare in those parts famines are still common world industries go through the world regional geography world industries kahan se yaad karoge world regional geography videos hain wo dekho tum jo shuru mein shuru se main keh raha hu dekho 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 भाई एक होलिस्टिक वे में जब तुम पढ़ते हो तो चीजें समझ में आती हैं भाई स्पेन में ये रिसोर्स है ये इंडस्ट्री है ये प्रॉब्लम्स है ये रिवर्स है समझ में आ गया स्पेन अगर सेम फिनोमिना इन सिस्टमेटिक ज्योग्राफी हैज टू बी डिस्क्राइब ऑल ओवर द वर्ल्ड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ एल्यूमिनियम इंडस्ट्री डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ आयरन स्टील इंडस्ट्री इट विल बी वेरी डिफिकल्ट फॉर यू टू रिमेंबर लेकिन सिस्टमेटिक अप्रोच ऐसी है मतलब वर्ल्ड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ इंडस्ट्रीज लोकेशन पैटर्न एंड प्रॉब्लम्स what are the factors that are causing the industries to locate where they are located here what you have to study i have discussed this what are the factors responsible for the location of industry at any particular place what are the factors that is causes locational patterns why a particular type of distribution pattern of aluminum industry are mostly found in areas having richly developed hydroelectricity cheap electricity like canada norway because electricity accounts for 35% cost of extracting aluminum from bauxite so obviously where the cheap electricity will be there that fact industry would be located over like erwada in canada that like basically this uh, itimat scheme in canada like this uh, in this uh, arendal and odda in norway aluminum smelting plant so locational pattern World industries के locational pattern, what are the factors that are influencing their location, and what are the problems? क्या समस्याएं आ रही हैं? Pattern of world trade. भाई अब इसके कई dimensions हैं. World trade, they it can be analyzed between countries, which countries are having trade with which. It can be analyzed with respect to commodities, what type of commodities are being ex exported and imported. it can be analyzed in the terms of changes in pattern now in developed countries tertiary service industry has taken roots manufacturing has shifted to east asia and south east asia and agriculture will be shifted to america south america and africa basically areas have, are becoming specialized now this pattern of industries is changing Tr pattern of trade is changing kahi pittsburgh ek time mein hua karta tha basic cap steel capital of the world now in pittsburgh no steel is manufactured why service sector has taken up manufacturing manufacturing sector has been replaced to china southeast asia and south asia developed countries are taking up service sector so patterns of world trade so patterns of world trade also are an index this world trade is an index to see the changing pattern of development in different parts of the world hum log pehle agricultural product export karte the then we started exporting manufactured products isn't it although the export of service product is still higher so changing pattern of trade reveals the changing the economic structure in any region as the workforce is shifted from primary activity to secondary to tertiary activity it reveals a shift in the structure of economy 
structural economy it also re reveals a shift from rural to urban based economy we'll discuss then population and settlement growth and distribution of world population padhenge bhai since beginning uh, when homo sapien came on this planet neanderthal and cro-magnon the growth was extremely slow gradually first industry of neolithic revolution in 8000 bc that is domestication of plants and animal expedited the pace of growth then 1770 industrial agriculture and medicine revolution in northwestern part of europe that is britain further expedited the growth and third in 1950 with the independence of all those colonial countries every country's government had concerted efforts to improving the living condition of people that further expedited the rate of growth growth we will discuss and distribution what are the areas of the world where major population is distributed what are the factors physical factors and cultural factors responsible for this physical cultural and political factors responsible for this distribution demographic attributes here we discuss demographic attribute means age structure of population how many people are below 15 15 to 50 15 15 to 60 16 and above dependency ratio depends upon the people above 60 and below 15 that is dependent population age structure sex ratio literacy rate workforce uh, occupational structure all these are the aspects of uh demographic attributes i will not discuss it nobody can discuss duniya bhar ke kahan se laoge yaar india ka to mushkil ho jata hai and when we discuss of india it becomes very difficult yes i will discuss it you cannot discuss it in detail the world over what is the occupation structure what is the sex ratio ha i will discuss superficially because it's not possible kisi kitab mein bhi nahi milega tumko dekh lo dhoond lo duniya mein basically what is the age structure in different parts of the world what is the sex ratio what is the literacy rate what is the dependency ratio what is the um, occupation structure matlab bahut sari cheeze aa jati hai isme so we will discuss briefly causes and consequences of migration log migrate kyon karte hain various theories are there ravenstein's theory hai na gravity models uh, and this basically lee's theory will discuss various theories why people migrate what are the various push and pull factors different people in different same setting take different decisions some tend to migrate some tend to stay back concepts of over under and optimum population population over population what is optimum population where the people population and the resource base is such that people enjoy a very high standard of living per capita productivity per capita consumption is good isn't it optimum population that is with the available available resources are maintaining very high standard of living that is optimum population optimum conditions can be maintained only if the growth of population keeps pace with the growth of resources if population grows rapidly it is overpopulation if resource base expands rapidly it is underpopulated overpopulation and underpopulation are the two facets of the same coin ek hi sikke ke do pehlu hai technology when will the overpopulation take place when human resource development is limited then new tech innovation of new technology is limited as a result new resource base will not expand so when human resource is not developed human resource should is the most important resource it is lack of development of human resource that hampers the growth of technology and in the absence of technology new resource base cannot be tapped hum kyun pareshan hai otek otek energy in tap kar pa rahe wave energy in tap karwaye we don't invest in research and development because we have human resource development ministry is given to any person kisi bhi country ki hrd ministry is the most important in fact 
ह्यूमन रिसोर्स आज से दस साल बाद वॉट विल टाइप ऑफ रिसोर्स विल बी रिक्वायर्ड आफ्टर टेन ईयर्स आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस विल बी रियलिटी एंड दीज मैनुअल वर्क विल बी रिप्लेस आज भी देखो इंजीनियर्स ग्रेजुएट हो रहे हैं मोर देन प्लेन ग्रेजुएट्स एंड आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस इज फाउंड इन वेरी लिमिटेड कॉलेजेस आज से दस साल बाद द नेचर ऑफ ह्यूमन रिसोर्स दैट विल बी रिक्वायर्ड दैट इज नॉट बींग प्रोड्यूस इन इंडिया तो आज से दस साल बाद क्या होगा ह्यूज अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट क्रिएटिविटी इज द ओनली एसेट दैट विल रिमेन आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस विल मैनेज ऑल दीज थिंग्स ह्यूमन रिसोर्स इफ डेवलप्ड लीड्स टू न्यू डेवलपमेंट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी न्यू टेक्नोलॉजिकल डेवलपमेंट टैप्स न्यू रिसोर्स बेस दिस रिसोर्स बेस एक्सपेंड वेरी फास्ट If we have technology, we can harness hydrogen from air. This air will become a resource, and with hydrogen fuel, we can run all, all our automobiles. This air will become a resource. Self suction atmosphere se hydrogen leti jayegi, and the air usme petrol dalne ki zaroorat hi nahi. Ek hydrogen vehicles hain, ek self suction propulsion jo hota hai, that is, jo uh, rockets me lagaya jata hai. Basically, it sucks the air from outside. So basically. it is lack of technology that we are unable to tap hydrogen from at atmosphere so it is not a resource so resource base hamara is not expanding so over population will continue because population is growing even if it doesn't grow the living standard of population grows if population does not expand only the living standard expand then the burden on resource will increase and this will become over populated because the resource base would not be able to sustain that living standard so it is the technological human resource development that determines the technological development and the technological development determines the pace of expansion of resource if technology is limited resource base will not expand overpopulation will take place underpopulation resource base is huge resource base is used to sustain even larger population underpopulation is what when the resource base is sufficient enough to sustain even larger population and this population is unable to tap this resource base what is underpopulation underpopulated areas brazil underpopulated when it is unable to tap the existing resource why lack of technology again underpopulation and overpopulation are the two facets of the same coin overpopulation results because of lack of technology resource base does not advance under population results because of lack of technology population is unable to tap the resource this is concept of over under concept of over under an optimum population population theories we'll discuss Marx, Malthus, the was the first. Marx, Spencer, various scholars have given various theories. Ricardo, why population grows? Some scholar believe it is a natural, it is a natural phenomena, and man need not bother about it. Population will take care of its own on its own. Then there are some social theories which say social code of conduct or social norms determine the population growth. We'll discuss it in detail. capillarity theory of uh, a scholar who said where societies are open and basically people have chances to grow across the class the they live in uh, they they prefer to reduce the population because they have to maintain the same standard of living they have to increase the standard of living various theories are there we'll discuss population theories natural nature law based theories social law based theories world population problem and policies now world population problem by in developing world it is in certain parts it is rapid growth in population that is a problem in eastern europe population is declining population of russia is declining by 1 lakh people per year ukraine is declining by 40000 persons per year khatam hote ja rahe hain russia tukurta ja rahe hain yahan se le jao extra 10 12 crore the population of up is bound to be 26 crore अगली सेंसेस में 26 करोड़ और बिहार की मान लो 14 करोड़ 40 करोड़ हो गए 40 करोड़ बेसिकली 40 करोड़ इट इज यूज 20 करोड़ कैन इजली बी ट्रांसप्लांटेड इन वेस्ट साइबेरियन प्लेन सेंट्रल साइबेरियन प्लेन टू ईस्ट साइबेरियन हाईलैंड ह्यूज लैंड मार्क्स एंड रशियन पॉपुलेशन इज श्रिंकिंग 
Canada's entire population is confined within 100 kilometers from USA's border. Pura Canada khali pada hai. Entire Australia's population is confined in peripheral areas. Wahan automobiles are not used. Why? Beech mein gaadi kharaap kari, mechanic nahi milega. Because population is confined in peripheral. Trains are used, railways. Li Brazil. Such large country and its population is 19 crore in 2011 census and UP's population was 20 crore. Brazil's population is so less. It's huge. Argentina, huge. So less population. In entire population of Africa is far less than that of India. Entire population of South America is less than that of India. Basically, India, basically 2.4% area and almost 18%, 85%, 19% of world population. So population policies will develop in two contexts. For world population problem in developed countries, developing countries. Measures taken in developed countries, developing countries. Certain developed countries are facing the population of decline. Russia, Mother Lenin Award. Jo aurat bara bachcho ko peda karegi, usse Mother Lenin Award. Ghar milega, gaadi milegi, bangla milega. Tony Blair ko dekha tha, paan chhe bachche kute rehte the. They want to preserve their white race. White race is in danger, ha? Huh? White race is in danger. Best of efforts. They are giving the best, but still population is declining. So, what all policies they have formulated, like Brazil, Argentina, in kya itni kam population hai, the population control is a crime. Incentives are given. But how population? Yes, vast untapped resources are there. Vast untapped resources. Social well-being and quality of life. Ye topic and this wo? human development index is having huge similarity. Itni similarity can you can interchange them. Social well-being and quality of life. I'll discuss when I'll discuss, you will see almost him is same. And Welfare geography in both the places will play a prominent role. Population as social capital. Social capital. Those societies which are having good networking, get together, social network, social organization, are said to be possessing huge social capital. Social capital refers to the networks existing in society. Bridging social capital, bonding social capital, vertical social capital, horizontal social capital, I'll discuss. Now, jitni networking hogi society mein, its productivity will be more. In fact, in metro cities like Delhi, the crimes committed, most of the crimes, tum list thake dekh lo, heinous crimes, are committed by those people who migrate from outside. And they fail to become part of society. They don't have any social recognition or social acceptability. They live as separate beings. They don't have any social, they are not bound by any social code of conduct. Humko battamiji karne se kaun rokta hai? Apne colony mein jate ho, to sar niche karke jate ho. Or yahan bajar mein ghumte ho, to kaise ghumte ho? It is social code of conduct. Yes, believe me. Ethics and morals ek side rakho. Every person is bound by social code of conduct. You have social stake in your place. Social standing. You are a part of social fabric. Social uh, acceptability and social accountability is there. A newcomer bahar se aaya, usko koi nahi yanta, na koi usko poochta hai. They see them as with a downtrodden figure. And basically, he doesn't have any social code. He is not bound by any social code. No, nor he has any social recognition. Nor he has, he is concerned about social acceptability or, or, or social um, gains. Yeah, he is least. He will do anything in this case. He doesn't know anything about it. The crimes in metro cities is not a law and order problem. It is a social problem. It is a social problem. When resident welfare associations give recognition to everyone, the gate pe khada hua outsider, har ladki ja rahi hai, namaste bhaiya, hello bhaiya, hi bhaiya, he becomes part of that society. He has social stake, social acceptability, social accountability. He will 
think 100 times, 200 times, 500 times before committing a crime. It is the lack of social capital that is responsible for increased crimes, especially in metro cities. And it's the responsibility of so resident welfare association to an ensure that every element living over there is a part of society. He has given social recognition and so that he, he may have social accountability to ensure his social acceptability. He becomes a part of social code of he follows the social code of conduct. Types and patterns of rural settlement. Types, basically, types and patterns. Types depend on, uh, pattern depend on geometric shape. And types, nahin, types depend on geometric shape. Confused around. Types and patterns, mein kya hota hai? various types of rural settlement. Just as we say, circular settlement, linear settlement, hai na? Uh, uh, wo, uh, wo, rectangular settlement. Uh, it is depend it depends upon geometric shape, type of settlement. A pattern of settlement means compact, semi-compact, uh, dispersed, various types of settlements. Padenge isko, types and patterns of rural settlement. A key topic hai ki rural settlement mein, a key topic. Paper two may be a key topic. Hai. Settlement mein, Paper 2 में तब भी इंडिया से ज्यादा है लेकिन पेपर 1 रूरल सेटलमेंट ओनली वन टॉपिक देयर टाइप्स एंड पैटर्न्स ऑफ रूरल सेटलमेंट टाइप होता है बेसिकली शेप ज्योमेट्रिक शेप पे डिपेंड करता है लीनियर सेटलमेंट अलोंग रोड्स एंड कैनाल्स सर्कुलर सेटलमेंट्स अलोंग द बेंड ऑफ द रिवर है ना स्टार टाइप सेटलमेंट इन अलोंग द जंक्शन ऑफ रोड्स इजंट इट एंड पैटर्न्स ऑफ रूरल सेटलमेंट हियर वो कॉम्पैक्ट सेमी कॉम्पैक्ट or a hamleted and dispersed environmental issues in rural settlement now there's a general conception where the rural environment is considered to be pristine and pure but what has happened with the growth of population and lack of infrastructure and the intensified pattern of agriculture activities more man has become an economic man previously agriculture was a way of life People had closer identity with environment. Pe peoples were less, pe less people, more space. Now with increased intensification of agriculture, increased use of pesticides, insecticides, and chemical fertilizer, the byproducts of waste generated by the environment ag agriculture activity has far exceeded the nature's capacity to absorb it. And so rural environment is having problems of air pollution, water pollution, soil pollution, on pollution of underlying aquifers. We'll discuss. Hierarchy of urban settlements. In any region, various settlements are ranked in order of their function or their size, mostly on the basis of their function. Whichever settlements which perform large number of functions are higher up in hierarchy. And obviously, where function will be more, the population will also be more. In any region, when we organize the settlements on the basis of order or on the basis of hierarchy, based on number of functions performed by them, we see the number of settlements increases with decrease in hierarchy. And the, at the same level, you find number of settlements existing at the same level of hierarchy. So various methods have been developed to find out the hierarchy of urban settlement. Four methods are there. We'll discuss them. How do we find out the hierarchy of urban settlement? Hierarchy is based on number of functions performed by any settlement. Whichever settlement performs largest number of functions is higher up in hierarchy, it is largest. And as the hierarchy decreases, what we see in the number of settlements lying at the same level also increases. And number of functions performed by them decreases. Urban morphology, internal structure of cities. What is the shape of city? What, what factors govern the internal morphology of city? Here various theories are put forward. Basically Burgess theory 
of concentric zone theory harris and ullman uh, this uh, this harris and ullman multiple nuclei theory and one davis and yort spectral theory but what i want to tell you is one thing what determines what type of what is our internal structure of city internal structure of city is simply what is the urban pattern of land use what is the pattern of land use internal structure kahan offices hain kahan roads hain kahan residences hain kahan sports complex hain kahan hospitals hain it is the nature of land use that gives a specific structure to city now how this land use is determined tum kisi land ko kis activity ko doge which patch of land will be devoted to which economic activity depends on the fact which economic activity can derive maximum profit and pay maximum rent for it that particular activity will come to dominate in that area ab commercial areas mein tum reh nahi sakte because the bijli bill starts from 10 units and electricity bill is high in certain areas residential desirability is there in certain areas it's not there only commercial functions can be performed any patch of land is devoted to that economic activity which is able to derive the maximum profit and pay maximum rent for it that particular activity will come to prevail over there although these decisions are taken by center government state government companies but ultimately they are guided by profit so this imparts various shapes to internal structure of city we will study in burgess model in davis and yort harris and ullman concentric zone theory sectoral theory multiple nuclei theory various types of urban morphology ah ah ja ye concept of primate city and rank size rule ab ek concept hai primate city given by mark jefferson ki the largest city of any region is disproportionately larger than the second largest and why he has given certain reasons for it london is five times larger than liverpool hai yeah. to so, matlab certain primate cities are those those cities primacy is usually found in developing world i'll tell you because most uh, mexico city see is huge the largest rank size this primate city this concept was given by mark jefferson in 1939 he said the largest city of any area is disproportionately larger than second largest and he gives the ratio 100 is to 30 is to 20 largest will be 100 then second largest will population will be 30 then third largest 20 so it has been found we will study it mark jefferson that in developing world yes because the development activities are confined in capital cities tum dekho state capitals most of the state capitals are disproportionately larger than the second largest city in all the states because development activities are confined that means uniform development has not taken place this is a feature of developing world functional classification of towns on the basis of functions various classification we will discuss nelson's classification and other classification basically most of the town perform most of the functions but it is the number of workforce deployed in any particular function that becomes the chief function of the city so here we will discuss the various theories propounded how we functionally classify the various towns on the basis of proportion of population devoted to that economic activity that activity becomes the chief activity of that city fear of urban influence city region fear of urban influence means city region you see if there is a city every city is functionally interrelated with the surrounding settlement like towns villages the city provides certain very important services like hospital education employment to this region and these regions also provide basic services like raw material food labor to the city the extent over which this functional interrelationship between the city and the surrounding region extend is known as fear of urban influence or city region or amland various names are given we'll discuss this ah yeah 
एक रैंक रैंक साइज रूल रह गया था रैंक साइज रूल वाज गिवन बाय जिप्स रैंक साइज रूल वाज गिवन बाय जिप्स ये रैंक साइज रूल प्राइमेट सिटी के साथ था वो रह गया था जिप्स ने दिया था ही गेव प्राइमेट सिटी का कंसेप्ट 1939 में और जिप्स ने रैंक साइज रूल इन 1949 दैट हियर ही शोड अ रिलेशनशिप दैट पॉपुलेशन ऑफ एनी सिटी इज प्रोपोर्शनल टू इट्स रैंकिंग लाइक पी1 इज द लार्जेस्ट सिटी देन द पॉपुलेशन ऑफ सेकंड लार्जेस्ट सिटी विल बी population of largest city divided by 2 population of third largest city will be population of largest city divided by 3 that is rank size rule that is population of nth city is p1 by n and this rule accords similarity with developed countries developed countries this rule has found similarities rural urban fringe basically this is suppose any metro metro city this is the surrounding region and beyond which rural landscape appear between the continuously built up area of any city and the area purely devoted to agriculture in between there is a transition zone where mixed land use prevails that is land is devoted both to primary activity secondary activity and tertiary activity this is known as rural urban fringe closer to the city it is known as urban fringe towards the rural area it is known as rural fringe we'll discuss it elaborately rural urban fringe it's the zone of mixed land use where both urban activities and rural activities coexist together to saaf kaise karenge सेटेलाइट टाउन अब जैसे दिल्ली में पॉपुलेशन बढ़ गई है अब क्या करें जो भी आता है दिल्ली आता है वी टेक आउट सर्टेन इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटीज एंड रिलोकेट टू द एडजॉइनिंग सिटी और वी क्रिएट अ न्यू सिटी लाइक फरीदाबाद नियर दिल्ली इट इज क्रिएटेड टू डीकंजस्ट टू हाउस द ओवर स्पिल पॉपुलेशन ऑफ दिल्ली तो satellite towns are those towns which are designed to house the overspill population of a city so that those people may find employment as well as residential base in that city itself they need not migrate to main city and that city acts as an independent entity independent of the central city so satellite towns are different from suburbs we will discuss what are suburbs what are edge towns edge towns what are satellite towns how they are different satellite towns are created near the metro cities to house its over overspill population to decongest the metro city problems and remedies of urbanization notes de dunga pad lena isme kuch samjhana nahi hai problems of urbanization remedies of urbanization i'll give you notes this topic does not require any explanation hey, problems kya hai bata dunga and what are the remedies sustainable development of cities this is very important our cities have grown in haphazard manner they have become overcrowded congested polluted crime unemployment and basically this clusters ghettos and basically this uh, slums and this squatter settlements they are matlab they have become very common phenomena how to develop a city sustainably or various measures have been suggested for example agenda 21 in rio earth summit and what are the other measures we'll discuss how to make a city livable how to ensure its sustainability matlab city mein collapse from outside and collapse from within two types of challenges we'll discuss now regions ye upar kaise jayega वैसे एक बात बताऊं मैं सीधे सिलेबस ही पढ़ाना शुरू करता ना तो अच्छा रहता क्योंकि अल्टीमेटली मुझे सब डिस्कस करना ही है नहीं कंटिन्यू रखूंगे कंसेप्ट ऑफ रीजन व्हाट इज अ रीजन नाउ प्रीवियसली रीजन वाज टेकन एज एन एंटिटी अ प्लेस दिस इज अ रीजन नेचुरल रीजन मतलब रीजन इज फिजिकली डिमार्केटेड 
physically formal region homogeneous in certain aspects functional region city and the surrounding region interrelated with each other hai na then the came the concept of planning region like damodar valley corporation entire region which has to be planned now the concept has changed na region is not end in itself it is a means to an end now object is not to study the region there can be as many regions as there are criteria to classify them literacy region on the basis of literacy there can be multiple regions on the basis of sex ratio there can be multiple region so region is not a entity you can have as many regions as you have basis to classify it are you getting this jaise koi bhi le lo urbanized urbanization region regions of wheat cultivation regions of rice cultivation they can be as many regions tum criteria change karte raho regions change hote jayenge now it is believed it is not the region objective of studying the region itself rather region is a means to an end to study something else like areas of wheat cultivation areas of literacy rate the concept of region has undergone significant change and methods of demarcating region concept of region types of region will discuss formal region functional region planning regions and vernacular regions we'll discuss what are the various methods single aspect method multiple aspect method uh, statistical method for demarcating a region various methods are there growth center and growth pools it is same as it is same as kahan gaya are टॉपिक ही गायब हो गया करॉक्शन बोडे बिले है नहीं इसमें किस बेवकूफ ने सिलेबस दिया ये आई एस कोर अरे एक टॉपिक और है यहां पर भाई या नहीं गई तो धोखा कर दिया हमारे साथ इन लोगों ने आईएएस कोर ने बहुत बड़ा धोखा कर दिया एक टॉपिक भी छोड़ दिया दिस ग्रोथ सेंटर एंड ग्रोथ पोल इज सेम एज पेरॉक्स एंड बॉडीविले मेंशन इन मॉडल्स ग्रोथ सेंटर वाज एन आइडिया इन द माइंड ऑफ पेरॉक्स इट वाज एन आइडिया दैट सम वेरी फास्ट ग्रोइंग इंडस्ट्रीज इफ दे एस्टैब्लिश्ड टू अ प्लेस बाय वे ऑफ फ्लोअर इफेक्ट एंड ट्रिकल डाउन इफेक्ट द ग्रोथ विल स्प्रेड टू एंटायर रीजन दैट वाज नोन एज ग्रोथ सेंटर and the same idea when it was give imp, ap, it, applied is known as growth pool body will there is a model ya tum log ek baar cross check kar lena syllabus ye topic inhone pata nahi kaise gayab kar diya kyunki ye topic isme nahi padhayenge ye same hai both are same the concept of growth center and growth pool is same perox and body will so we will study in models how it was a concept of regional planning and most of the countries adopting regional planning adopted it perox jo bhi backward region hai wahan par ek dynamic industry a propulsive industry a growth pool laga do it will grow very fast and propel spillover effect it, the growth will be jaise uh, is institute yahan par because of i institute in rajnagar numerous is bookshops have come in, into existence इट इज अ स्पिल ओवर इफेक्ट भाई बाजी राम ने अपना इंस्टीट्यूट किताबों के लिए थोड़ा खोला था किताबों की दुकान खुल जाएगी इट इज अ स्पिल ओवर इफेक्ट न्यूमरस बुक शॉप हैव कम इन टू एक्सिस्टेंस एंड ट्रिकल डाउन इफेक्ट वेन एवरी सेक्शन ऑफ सोसाइटी रीप द बेनिफिट वहां के मकान मालिकों को किराएदार मिल गए रिक्शे वाले खोची वाले समोसे वाले रेस्टोरों वाले ऑल आर बेनिफिटिंग एवरी पर्सन फ्रॉम अ कॉबलर टू अ बकलर एवरी पर्सन इज बेनिफिटिंग दैट इज ट्रिकल डाउन इफेक्ट कोई इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटी वेन इट टेक्स प्लेस बीट वहां आई एस इंस्टीट्यूट नहीं होता कोई इंडस्ट्री होती है वट एवर इनिशियली इट विल ग्रो रेपिडली डायनेमिक इंडस्ट्रीज आर ग्रोथ पोल्स है कैपेसिटी ऑफ फास्ट ग्रोथ एंड दे स्प्रेड द ग्रोथ इन द नेबरिंग रीजन बाई स्पिल ओवर इफेक्ट लाइक स्टील इंडस्ट्री देन ऑटोमाइल इंडस्ट्री ऑटोमेटिकली कम ओवर देयर स्टील रिक्वायरिंग हैवी मशीन टूल्स इंडस्ट्री विल कम ओवर देयर स्टील by product is also used in fertilizer fertilizer industries will come over here they are correlated industry it is spill over effect and as a result of demand generated by these industries schools hospitals markets will also come into existence that is trickle down effect trickle down effect benefits every section of society 
सो वील डिस्कस ओवर इयर रीजनल इंबैलेंसेस भाई रीजनल इंबैलेंस इज अ वेरी वेक टर्म इफ आई स्टडी द सेम रीजनल इंबैलेंस इन टर्म्स ऑफ हैप्पीनेस भूटान इज मच मोर रिच देन अमेरिका रीजनल इंबैलेंस को केवल रिसोर्स और स्टैंडर्ड ऑफ लिविंग से मत देखो यू चेंज द क्राइटेरिया एंड रीजनल इंबैलेंस विल चेंज आर यू गेटिंग इट स्टैंडर्ड ऑफ लिविंग लो रीजनल इंबैलेंस विल चाहिए भूटान बहुत नीचे रहेगा स्टैंडर्ड ऑफ लिविंग में बट स्टैंड ऑफ हैप्पीनेस क्राइटेरिया इज हैप्पीनेस देन भूटान विल बी फार हाई हायर अप इज इंट इट सो वेरियस रीजन्स आर इम्बैलेंस्ड एंड दिस इम्बैलेंस हम लोग वी कन्फाइन इट टू इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट डोंट कन्फाइन इट टू इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट रीजनल इम्बैलेंस इज अ वेरी मल्टी डायमेंशनल आस्पेक्ट विल स्टडी इट एज वील चेंज द क्राइटेरिया रीजनल इम्बैलेंस विल चेंज एनवायरमेंटल इशूज इन रीजनल प्लानिंग वाइल प्लानिंग अ रीजन वी टेक वेरियस आस्पेक्ट इन टू कंसिडरेशन सिंस एनवायरमेंट इम्पैक्ट असेसमेंट ई आई ए हैज बीन बिकम मैंडेटरी सो वाइल प्लानिंग द इम्पैक्ट एनवायरमेंटल कॉस्ट द कॉस्ट ऑफ ट्रीटिंग द एनवायरमेंट शुड बी टेकन इन टू कंसिडरेशन वाइल रीजनल प्लानिंग वाइल प्लानिंग फॉर अ रीजन इट्स एनवायरमेंटल आस्पेक्ट मस्ट बी टेकन इन टू कंसिडरेशन अलॉन्ग विद इकोनॉमिक एंड अदर सोशल आस्पेक्ट लाइक दामोदर वैली कॉरपोरेशन वॉज based on the lines of tennessee valley authority tva of usa here while demarcating the region known as ka damodar brings flood in bengal so the entire region the catchment area of damodar river was drawn and then it was said ki yes we will make various canals barrages at durgapur barrages there various dams various reservoirs various hydroelectric schemes and see the benefits to the regional economy at the same time what it has impact on environment that will also be considered environmental impact will be considered how adversely it impacts the environment how positively it has to be corrected that is when any economic activity adversely impact the environment it is known as positive feedback when any economic activity adversely impact the environment that is known as positive feedback and when the man takes measure to reduce the adverse impact on environment it is known as positive it is it is known as negative feedback ulta lag raha hai na ulta lag raha hai na when any environmental hazard or man made degradation to environment takes place it is positive feedback measures taken by man to contain that feedback to uh, reduce that feedback is known as negative feedback and the time that takes between implementing the policy to contain the negative to contain the environmental impact when you implement the policy some time lag is there that is known as lagged lagged feedback lagged l a g g d lagged feedback the time duration between which your activity has impacted on the environment and then you plan and plan for conservation the time lapse between the economic degradation starts and the economic recovery starts uh, environmental recovery starts this time lag lag is known as laggard feedback and because of that ecological degeneration some people may leave that area and come and settle over area which is having more carrying capacity that is known as staggered feedback padhaunga ye staggered feedback very important so we will discuss various issues in regional planning planning for sustainable development bhai sustainable development is everywhere che jagah hai slavas mein sustainable development is at six places planning for sustainable development of cities sustainable development planning for sustainable development matlab planning economic planning should be such that development should be sustainable it is possible only when economy ecology and society all reap equal benefits any sustainable development is possible when three dimensional approach is followed ecology economy society matlab like merely not economy social inclusive social inclusiveness social inclusiveness is important 
इकोलॉजी डिग्री डिग्रेड और इकोनॉमी एक्सपैंड कर रही है एंड इफ इकोनॉमी एक्सपैंडिंग ओनली फ्यू पीपल आर रीपिंग द बेनिफिट दैट इज नॉट इंक्लूसिव ग्रोथ सोसाइटी एट लार्ज मस्ट बी बेनिफिटेड एंड देन इज मॉडल्स एंड थ्योरीज एंड लॉज इन ह्यूमन जोग्राफी मोस्ट मार्क्स फैचिंग एंड मोस्ट इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक इन एंटायर ह्यूमन जोग्राफी सिस्टम एनालिसिस इन ह्यूमन जोग्राफी सी एवरीथिंग इज अ सिस्टम सिस्टम इज ग्रुप ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट दिस यूनिवर्स इज अ सिस्टम एंड वेरियस गैलेक्सीज आर इट्स एलिमेंट्स इन अ पर्टिकुलर गैलेक्सी वेरियस स्टार्स आर इट्स सिस्टम इन अ प्लेनेट वेरियस कंट्रीज आर सिस्टम इन अ कंट्री वेरियस स्टेट्स आर इट्स एलिमेंट्स मतलब सिस्टम इज अ ग्रुप ऑफ एलिमेंट्स एंड दो एलिमेंट्स आर इंटर रिलेटेड विद ईच अदर सिस्टम सिस्टम एनालिसिस यू कैन एनालाइज एनी थिंग विद सिस्टम सिस्टम एनालिसिस ह्यूमन जोग्राफी विल डिस्कस हाउ वेरियस एलिमेंट्स आर हैविंग पॉजिटिव फीडबैक लगाट फीडबैक लूप फीडबैक वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ फीडबैक्स आर देयर सिस्टम इज अ ग्रुप ऑफ एलिमेंट्स हु आर इंटर रिलेटेड विद ईच अदर एंड सिस्टम कैन बी ऑफ वेरियस स्केल्स कैन बी एट वेरियस स्केल लार्ज स्केल सिस्टम और स्मॉल स्केल सिस्टम मालथूज मार्क्सियन एंड मालथूज एंड मार्क्सियन एंड डेमोग्राफिक ट्रांजिशन मार्क्स थ्योरी ऑफ पॉपुलेशन दिस वी विल स्टडी हियर मार्क्स थ्योरी एंड मालथूजियन थ्योरी यहां नहीं पढ़ेंगे दिस वी विल स्टडी population theories in population theories here we will study these theories of marx and malthus marx and malthus because here we will discuss the population growth theories population theories into two groups natural based nature based theories social law based theories and here malthus and on side marx and their various other scholars views right मालथूज ने कहा था बेसिकली बहुत ही मालथूज वॉज अ फर्स्ट स्कॉलर और ही सेड बेसिकली पॉपुलेशन पॉपुलेशन इज रिजल्ट ऑफ पॉवर्टी सॉरी पॉवर्टी मालथूज बहुत ही बदनाम आदमी है भाई सबसे बदनाम स्कॉलर है दुनिया का और ऐसे लोगों को कहते हैं न्यू मालथूजियन न्यू मालथूजियन लिमिट्स टू ग्रोथ वालों को कहते हैं न्यू मालथूजियन क्योंकि वो कहते हैं वर्ल्ड इज डूम टू एंड धरती खत्म होनी होनी है चाहे कुछ भी कर लो अब भाई कुछ तो बताओ नहीं कुछ नहीं हो सकता अब कुछ हो ही नहीं सकता दुनिया खत्म होनी होनी है पढ़ाएंगे लोग ना कुछ तो बोले कुछ भी कर लो कितना भी टेक्नोलॉजी डेवलप कर लो कितना भी पोल्यूशन कम कर लो कितना भी खाना कम कर लो दुनिया खत्म होनी होनी है ऐसे लोगों को क्या कहोगे न्यू मालथूज ने क्या कहा मालथूज वॉज ऑफ द व्यू दैट पॉपुलेशन ग्रोज जियोमेट्रिक प्रोफेशन एंड मीन्स ऑफ सब्सिस्टेंस ग्रो एट अर्थमेटिक प्रोग्रेशन मालथूस का कहना था पॉपुलेशन बहुत तेजी से ग्रो करती है मीन्स ऑफ सब्सिस्टेंस धीमे धीमे ग्रो करते हैं एज अ रिजल्ट सोसाइटी गेट्स डिवाइडेड इन टू हैव एंड हैव नॉट रिच एंड पुअर भाई पॉपुलेशन तेजी से ग्रो कर रही है और क्यों कर रही है और इन लोगों में डिजायर है पीपुल अर्ली बिकॉज उन्होंने उल्टे सीधे कंसेप्ट दिए मतलब इट इज द बायोलॉजिकल नेचर उन्होंने कहा आदमी जल्दी शादी करता है जल्दी बच्चे करता है और पॉपुलेशन बढ़ जाती है आई विल डिस्कस इट इलेबरेटली वेरी मच टू ऑफ द ह्यूमन कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स विच आर एंटागोनिस्टिक नीड फॉर फूड एंड डिजायर फॉर सेक्स डिजायर टू हैव चिल्ड्रन इज अ सोशल इंस्टिंक्ट डिजायर टू हैव सेक्स इज अ बायोलॉजिकल इंस्टिंक्ट ही इंटरमिक्स दोज तो उसने अपनी उल्टी सी थ्योरी बनाई कि पॉपुलेशन ग्रोज वेरी फास्ट बिकॉज ऑफ ह्यूमन इंस्टिंक्ट एंड मींस ऑफ सब्सिस्टेंस स्लोली तो रिच एंड पुअर दैट मींस कैपिटलिस्टिक सोसाइटी कम्स इनटू टू एग्जिस्टेंस एंड ही डिफेंडेड द कैपिटलिस्टिक सोसाइटी ही साइड बिकॉज दीज कैपिटलिस्टिक पीपल दे दे डोंट स्पेंड दे डोंट इंक्रीज दे पॉपुलेशन दे एनहांस दे स्टैंडर्ड ऑफ लिविंग एंड दे इन्वेस्ट द कैपिटल बिकॉज द इन्वेस्टमेंट basically production takes place because of because of the investment production and this production is available for consumption so capitalist society is must inhone kaha ye population growth rapidly ho rahi hai means of subsistence dheeme dheeme badh rahe hain jiski wajah se rich aur poor hain jiski wajah se capitalistic society hai and he defended it 
that it is the capitalist society that preserves the resource and makes it available for investment that generates employment and that generates demand and production marx ka ulta kehna tha marx ka na it is the capitalistic society that is responsible for population growth and poverty according to malthus first population growth that was responsible for poverty unhone kaha population tezi se grow karti hai rich or poor mein society divide ho jati hai is society ko kehte hain capitalism marx ne kaha no it is the capitalistic society that is responsible for poverty it is the capitalist society which pays the workers low wages low wages poverty is the result of unjust social institution of capitalism it pays workers low wages so workers are poor and since they are poor they don't have any assets so they do think they think more hands at work will lead to more earnings so they go for rapid population growth so that more people can earn for them तो ये एग्जैक्टली उल्टा है इनके हिसाब से पॉपुलेशन ग्रोथ इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर पॉवर्टी एंड पॉवर्टी इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर कैपिटलिज्म मार्क्स सेज इट इज कैपिटलिज्म व्हिच इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर लो वेजेस दैट लीड्स टू पॉवर्टी एंड पॉवर्टी लीड्स टू पॉपुलेशन ग्रोथ यहां पर पॉपुलेशन ग्रोथ लीड्स टू पॉवर्टी एंड पॉपुलर पॉवर्टी लीड्स टू कैपिटलिज्म मार्क्स सेज कैपिटलिज्म लीड्स टू पॉवर्टी एंड पॉवर्टी लीड्स टू पॉपुलेशन ग्रोथ ऑपोजिट सो वी विल डिस्कस दिस कहा गया भाई तो डेमोग्राफिक ट्रांजिशन थ्योरी पढ़ा देंगे बेटा नॉट स्ट्रीम और थॉमसन ने दी थी डेमोग्राफिक ट्रांजिशन थ्योरी इनिशियली बर्थ रेट एंड डेथ रेट आर वेरी हाई इन प्रिमेटिव सोसाइटी एंड ग्रेजुअली as medicines are provided birth rate starts declining rapidly but uh, sorry death rate starts declining rapidly a uh, birth rate remains high with in so population explosion in third phase as literacy increases birth rates also decline slowly and uh, death rate declines slowly and population growth decreases natural increase decreases and ultimately basically it stabilizes it becomes slow so usme dekhenge what is concept of जीरो पॉपुलेशन ग्रोथ जेर विल डिस्कस डेमोग्राफिक ट्रांजिशन थ्योरी इट मीन्स एज इकोनॉमी सोसाइटी एडवांसेज दिस चेंज इन द डेमोग्राफिक प्रोफाइल ऑफ सोसाइटी फ्रॉम हाई बर्थ रेट एंड हाई डेथ रेट टू लो बर्थ रेट एंड लो डेथ रेट एंड इट टेक्स प्लेस इन स्टेजेस डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द इकोनॉमिक सोशल सोशो इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट ऑफ सोसाइटी थॉमसन एंड नॉटस्टीन विल डिस्कस सेंट्रल प्लेस थ्योरी ऑफ क्रिस्टॉलर ये महान आए इन्होंने कहा कि भाई इज द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थ्योरी स्टिल रेलेवेंट सेंट्रल प्लेस थ्योरी इट ट्राइज टू फाइंड आउट एन ऑर्डर मतलब थिंग्स आर देयर इज सम ऑर्डर इन द अरेंजमेंट ऑफ थिंग्स इन्होंने कहा इफ इन एनी एरिया इन एनी एरिया बाइंग एंड सेलिंग इज एन इंपॉर्टेंट एक्टिविटी देन द अरेंजमेंट ऑफ सेटलमेंट फॉर मैक्सिमम प्रॉफिट शुड बी लाइक दिस in any area if transport is most important transport cost are important then the arrangement of settlement should be like this for maximum profit in any area if it is under centralized administration then the arrangement of settlement should be like this for best administration so he has given he has in his objective was to find an order in the spacing of settlements in this process he also gave the models various models losh also gave the model in fact losh was interested in finding out the location of industry which have, where profits where um, um, revenues are maximum in this process he propounded certain concepts that he is taken to along with central crystaller crystaller go detail mein padhayenge sabhi theories ko detail mein padhayenge it is most conceptual sabse interesting as sabse mazedar k there is a k k K3 marketing model, K4 transport model, K7 administrative model. K, K is a it it K is a K indicates the relationship between two interactive hierarchical level. K indicates the ratio in which the lower order settlements increase of the highest order settlement. K also increases the indicates the ratio in which the complementary area 
of low order settlement increases below the highest order settlement we'll discuss it wanthunan bhai wanthunan i unhone kaha if any patch of land is there which type of land use will give maximum profit to that land he said i am going to give the theory that is if any patch of land is devoted to a particular type of land use then it can yield maximum profit his objective was what his objective was to find that suppose this is the city as we move away from the city the different types of crops are grown why different types of crops are grown as we move away from the city and second he also observed that intensity of cultivation decreases as we move away from the city even even if the fertility of the land remains same why to give explanation to these two basic argument why the nature of land use varies with increasing distance from the city and why the intensity of land use decreases as we move away from the city he gave two models crop theory crop model and intensity model we'll discuss and he said various zones of agriculture cultivation will come into existence weber's model of industrial location weber sorry weber's model of industrial location now a weber ये थीम तो बहुत पहले से चली आई थी लॉस ने भी यही किया है ये डिटरमाइन द ऑप्टिमम लोकेशन ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ मैक्सिमम रेवेन्यू वेबर डिटरमाइन दैट लोकेशन विल बी ऑप्टिमम वे द कॉस्ट ऑफ मैन्युफैक्चरिंग विल बी मिनिमम वेबर ट्राई टू फाइंड आउट सच लोकेशन ऑफ इंडस्ट्री वेर द कॉस्ट ऑफ मैन्युफैक्चरिंग इज मिनिमम सिंस कॉस्ट आर लीस्ट तो प्रॉफिट विल बी मैक्सिमम आइडियली तो वो जगह होनी चाहिए वेयर द प्रॉफिट आर मैक्सिमम मतलब रेवेन्यूज आर मैक्सिमम एंड कॉस्ट इज लीस्ट बट दे कैन बी नो पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट वेयर बोथ दीज कंडीशन आर मेट इट्स नॉट पॉसिबल बिकॉज रेवेन्यूज आर मैक्सिमम वेयर द परचेजिंग पावर इज हाई कॉस्ट आर मिनिमम वेयर रिसोर्स आर अवेलेबल एंड इट इज नॉट नेसेसरी दैट वेर एवर रिसोर्स आर अवेलेबल परचेजिंग पावर शुड ऑल्सो भी हाई भाई मैक्सिमम रेवेन्यूज आर वेयर where the purchasing power and demand is more demand is more where the purchasing power is more where the selling will be more cost is minimum where where raw material this consumption its its, its market raw material transport cost labor cost is minimum that will be a least cost location so these are two different points and they were analyzed by two different scholars loss and weber rostov's model of stages of growth रोस्टोव ने बताया कि जैसे सोसाइटी अंडरगोज ट्रांजिशन देर आर वेरियस स्टेजेस एंड अकॉर्डिंग टू रोस्टोव दीज स्टेजेस आर इनएविटेबल दैट इज फ्रॉम प्रिमेटिव सोसाइटी टू प्री कंडीशन टू टेक ऑफ टेक ऑफ एंड मैच्योर एंड वन फाइनल स्टेज एज ऑफ मास कंजम्पन ही सेट सोसाइटी गोज थ्रू दीज स्टेजेस एज द इकोनॉमिक ट्रांजिशन टेक्स प्लेस the society transits from primitive society to society of high mass consumption now the dates of this transition and the features of this transition were criticized bhai india mein to wo sare feature milte hain jo primitive se lekar ke mass high mass consumption tak india has features primitive society andaman nicobar chale jao see the tribals pre conditions for take off take off mature drive to maturity age of high mass consumption you will find all these stages and the criteria that he suggested when a country will transit from this to this were criticized and the dates that he suggested they were also criticized rostov stages of model stages of growth basically batata hai ki how a state economy and society transits transition jo demographic transition theory hai wo batati hai how the demographic profile changes as the economy advances here he is discussing how with time economy advances and when economy advances what all changes take place for your heartland and remnant theory basically mackender and remnant mackender and ye mackender ne di thi aur remnant ki di thi ek the scholar kya naam tha hmm heartland theory and remnant theory in heartland theory mackender said the core of eurasia if anybody comes to control the core of eurasia he'll become world power 
because in the northern part of russia it is frozen in the east in the west volga river in the east various mountain ranges from pamir not you will see tian shan altai range tian mountain yablonovi stenovoy kolima range these ranges it is protected from there in the west it is protected by ural and volga river and north it is frozen so this core area if anybody comes to rule he will become the super power because no our uh, naval power would be able to capture it isi ke baad aaye spike man ha spike man remnant theory was given by spike man spike man said kya bewakoofi ki baat kar raha hai ye jo area ye bata raha hai yahan kuch hota to hai nahi paida ha it does not have carrying capacity no mineral resource no industries were developed by then how can it support be the capital of the world so, matlab heartland of the most important center of the world because it does not have any carrying capacity he said rather the rimland countries surrounding this heartland that is having both land based and maritime resource they has the potential to become the world power both these theories collapse miserably and heartland theory was totally ruled out and later on rimland theory led to cold war we'll discuss detail mein discuss karenge laws of international boundaries and frontiers by boundaries are lines on map frontiers are zones no man's land now frontiers are not existent kabhi tha zamane mein jab frontiers hote the ab to everywhere boundaries there frontiers are a phenomena of past New, either the buffer states have come into existence or the adjoining states have encroached upon the frontiers like amal aksai chin hai nobody lives over there 62 mein bhi koi nahi rehta tha aaj bhi koi nahi rehta hai it was taken to be a frontier nobody was least concerned china taking advantage ingress in that region and construct a road connecting sengkiang to tibet so basically now frontiers are not there frontiers used to be there in past and what were the features of frontiers we'll discuss what are the various types of frontiers political frontiers settlement frontier primary frontier secondary frontier and what are the various types of boundaries theek hai bhai aaj main thak gaya hai ये वैसे पता नहीं तुम लोगों को इसमें क्या मजा आया वैसे मैं पढ़ाता इसको एक एक करके टॉपिक को तो एक दो टॉपिक भी कवर हो जाते आज कुछ फायदा लगा इसमें नहीं अगर लगाओ तो बताओ मतलब मुझे तो बेसिकली होता क्या है कि आई हैव टू डिस्कस ईच एंड एवरी टॉपिक एंड इनफैक्ट दिस विल टेक दिस आई विल डिवोट मैक्सिम टाइम इनफैक्ट इसको शुरू करने में ही पांच छह दिन लग जाएंगे पांच छह दिन तक तो तुमको बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट से मैं रूबरू करवाऊंगा ह्यूमन जोग्राफी के फाइव सिक्स डेज सो दैट यू आर वेरी मच कंफर्टेबल व्हेन आई डिस्कस द सिलेबस ओह यस सर आई वी नो इट तुम्हें लगे हाँ वी नो इट ऐसी फील आए इवन बिफोर स्टार्टिंग द टॉपिक्स यस सर वी नो इट मतलब आई विल स्टार्ट कल से सिलेबस स्टार्ट करते हैं आई विल नॉट स्टार्ट सिलेबस फॉर इनिशियल फोर फाइव डेज maybe i will discuss the basic concepts and terminologies which are very important aur tumko ghar ja ke use rat lena hai aur tumko beech beech mein aisi feeling bhi aa sakti hai pata nahi kya padha rahe hai ye kyun tum jab entirely naye domain russia mein chale jao tumhe samajh mein aayega russian log kya bol rahe hain waise hi every subject has its own language and feeling dheeme 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 ha Yes, yes, yes. I am getting it. I am getting it. I am getting it. Because we are venturing into human hardcore human geography, and that too first topic. Baki topic to normal hai. Jaise physical geography thi, chiz hai maine samjha di. Sab baak all rest of the topics are just like any other topic. Ye normal. Ye normal. Concept hai. Samjha dunga. Simple hai. लैंग्वेज अंग्रेजी वाली है सिंपल है यहां प्रॉब्लम क्या है हियर द इशू इज इज अ डेफिनेट लैंग्वेज ऑफ जोग्राफी यू हैव टू यूज अ डेफिनेट लैंग्वेज दैट इज नॉट इंग्लिश बाकी सारे टॉपिक्स में जैसे हम पढ़ते आ रहे हैं वैसा ही है ठीक है परस्पेक्टिव को छोड़ दो तो इकोनॉमिक जोग्राफी पोलिटिकल एंड सेटलमेंट जोग्राफी दीज कंसेप्ट विल बी अप्लाइड द कंसेप्ट हम ही यहीं पढ़ेंगे सारे दे विल बी अप्लाइड ओवर देयर बट द लैंग्वेज इज सिंपल इंग्लिश यू कैन इजली अंडरस्टैंड here the issue is of language there is a geographical language terms concepts normative 
नॉर्मेटिव मीन्स स्टैंडर्ड आइडियल दे इग्नोर ऑल ह्यू मतलब जैसे लाइक्स एंड डिसलाइक्स दे टेक ऑल मैन एज रैशनल इकोनॉमिक दे टेक सरफेस होमोजीनियस आइसोट्रोपिक एट द सेम टाइम नॉर्मेटिव मीन्स लाइक्स डिसलाइक्स वैल्यूज इथिक्स तो नॉर्मेटिव है क्या मैं बताऊंगा क्या है डोंट गेट कन्फ्यूज नॉर मतलब यू मस्ट नो द मीनिंग ऑफ द टर्म्स वेरी प्रिसाइजली मतलब क्वान्टिटेटिव अप्रोच निगेट्स नॉर्मेटिव क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन वैल्यूज ट्रेडिशन लाइक्स एंड डिसलाइक्स ऑन वन हैंड नॉर्मेटिव नॉर्मेटिव के दो मीनिंग हैं टू मीनिंग्स आई डिस्कस तो मैं चाहता हूँ शुरू के चार पाँच दिन फोर फाइव डेज आई शुड डिस्कस आई विल नॉट स्टार्ट द सिलेबस ये सिलेबस नहीं स्टार्ट करेंगे ओवरऑल then after four at चलो फोर days फोर days मान लो फोर to फाइव we will start the syllabus चलो फोर days मान लो फाइव नहीं for फोर days थ्री फोर days आई विल डिस्कस द बेसिक्स बेसिक्स बेसिक समझ रहे हो ना देन आई विल स्टार्ट द सिलेबस एंड दोज बेसिक्स आर नॉट टोटली अनरिलेटेड दे आर रिलेटेड विद दिस सिलेबस दे आर रिलेटेड when i will discuss this topic in isolation you will be able to correlate it with other topics because of these four days discussion are you getting it dekho ye wala jo topic hai na ye ye perspective isme thoda time lagega main time dunga lagega nahi mere paas video hai pichle saal ke kuch topics hain jaise human development index hai cultural regions hain ये लैंग्वेज ये सेम रहे लेकिन रेस्ट ऑफ दे इज अ चेंज इन द कंटेंट दे इज चेंज इन द अप्रोच राइट और व्हाट यू नीड टू डू तुम लोगों ने वो सोशल इकोनॉमिक जोग्राफी वाली किताब ली ले ली है तो ठीक है नहीं ले ली है तो भी ठीक है बिकॉज समझ में नहीं आएगी वो फर्स्ट फोर चैप्टर्स आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट विच डील्स विद परस्पेक्टिव I have covered them thoroughly. मैंने पूरे कवर कर लिए हैं चारों चैप्टर फर्स्ट फोर चैप्टर आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दे आर कॉम्पैक्ट नोट कॉम्पैक्ट नोट एक भी लाइन इंपॉर्टेंट अन इंपॉर्टेंट नहीं है बट इट्स लैंग्वेज इज ट्रिवियल राइट तो टुमोरो ऑनवर्ड आई विल स्टार्ट डिस्कसिंग ह्यूमन जोग्राफी विल स्टार्ट विद बेसिक्स कल बेसिक्स चलेंगे परसों बेसिक्स चलेंगे कम से कम तीन दिन तो बेसिक्स चलेंगे चार नहीं तो तीन दिन देन वी विल स्टार्ट विद Syllabus, right? And you keep a very keen eye on the questions that have been asked. By a eighth question, so it can happen. Because every question is not necessary. But still, if you are able to answer ninety-five percent of those questions, it's good. It's very good. It's very good. Okay. तो आज तुम लोगों ने थका दिया इसी में मुझको टुडे आई वाज थिंकिंग टू स्टार्ट द सिलेबस तो पेन एंड कॉपी बी रेडी व्हाट इज ह्यूमन जोग्राफी विल स्टार्ट विद वेरी बेसिक आई विल कीप माय लैंग्वेज एज सिंपल एज पॉसिबल और इवन इफ आई यूज टफ लैंग्वेज आई विल एक्सप्लेन इट वहीं पर मैं समझा दूंगा इट मीन्स दिस Are you getting this? Because here the terminologies are to be grasped. You have to grasp the meaning. You have to grasp the meaning of meaning. You have to grasp the meaning of terminology. Stands for normal English terminology. Anything behind a purpose. We under we want to know the underlying purpose. Yeah. Certain terms I will use. You need to memorize them. समझ के याद कर लेने हैं. And be ready to take notes. Or tomorrow I will start with human geography. And uh, For three days or four days, we'll continue with basics. उसके बाद क्या है कि we'll start the syllabus. और जब syllabus start करेंगे, तो एक तो notes तुम्हारे पास हैं. और एक मैं additionally dictate करूँगा. Right? Addition. Okay.